<laughs> Hello. Wow, it's a big question for me. I um, I was really lucky. I really only ever had um, kind of growing up. I had a slight scoliosis in my spine, so all the ballet background I had was. Um, was kind of life-saving in regards to finding a, a symmetry and a balance to my body muscularly. And I think that put me in good stead. And I had a really lucky career where I really just got a sore neck or a rolled ankle and that was kind of about it. And um, I was probably, well, probably when I hit 45 is where I had some major things happen that were very confronting. And, you know, injuries are super confronting for anyone who's a dancer because it means you have to have time out and it means you have to be patient and you have to honour your body and you have to listen to your body and most dancers just get so frustrated and go back too early and so it was very, um, it was confronting for me because I had a, uh, I had a, first I had a spinal, <coughs> had a back injury um, which was quite significant and um, I kind of was choreographing a lot of the time and I wasn't able to move freely and then just from the wear and tear of a very long dance career I mean, I was still dancing like I was 18 at 45. Um, and I know most people would stop in their 30s, so I really pushed the envelope. And I had a lateral tear in my hip, which I think would have come from, from my back not being so great. And I had a lateral tear um, surgery and in my right hip. And <clears throat> again, I'm, I was a choreographer, so everyone said to me, how are you gonna keep working? How are you gonna keep doing it? And I kind of, it wasn't as confronting as if, if I was a choreographer that kind of got in front of a mirror and made up steps to music and invented by actually working physically, it would have been, I think, even super confronting. But because I'm a choreographer who sees it all in my head like a movie and I, I write it down or I draw it, um, I never ever get into a studio. And I, th I think if I ever did, if I'd tried to, I'd feel so um, pressured and choked by it that I'd retreat back home. And as soon as I got back home into my own space and lied on the lounge, boom, there it was. So even though I was injured at the time, I could still work because I could still design. So that was, but it was a new way of me getting it onto the dancers because that's the only time I really danced was to, to, to put it onto the dancers and I had to obviously had a very great assistant to help get it onto their body, but I got very sharp at communicating dance and um, it actually made me have a really incredible new attitude to my body because I'd always taken it for granted and I just demanded it to do so, so much. And I hadn't really been, I'd never really kind of hugged my body and gone, wow, thank you for all the things that I've asked you to do. I've really pushed you hard and You've really been amazing to me and so I, I got kind of a new appreciation for what my body could do and, and after that I had two shoulder reconstructions <laughs> and I had a cartilage crack in my ankle and so over quite a few years in a row I, I could hardly move because I was, I was rehabbing from everything and labral tears on both shoulders, they went in and they saw that they were just completely worn out. So they reconstructed them and now they're like better than ever. <laughs> and my back is great. Um, the ankle was, uh, I had cartilage missing and I, um, there's a thing called um, PRP and it's, it's a treatment where they uh, take your blood and they spin it and they extract the red platelets and they inject the red platelets into the injury. And it injures it all over again because it goes through the process of inflammation as part of the healing. And then it regenerates cells, kind of like stem cell. And I was on a guinea pig trial for my ankle because they'd had success with um, ligament and tendon before. But they said, mm, we're not sure that cartilage is going to really work, but we'd like to try. So I went on their guinea pig trial. And because I was off dancing because I was rehabbing from everything, uh, I was kind of off my foot and because I was off my foot and I had six needles over a certain period of time, uh, I had the MRI last year and I've completely got all of my cartilage back, which is amazing. Um, so I'm like a bit of a bionic woman. I've got two new shoulders, I've got a new hip, 
Well, it wasn't replaced, but it was, you know, it's working perfectly. My back has completely settled down. But I have a regimen where I'm, uh, where I'm, I really approach my body very differently from a, a much more softer perspective. And I am very aware and conscious of what, um, of what it does and what I demand it to do and what I ask it to do on a daily basis. And I honor that by, um, meditation and stretching and um, uh, Pilates, rehabilitative Pilates. Um, yeah, and a lot of rehab work with a lot of amazing physiotherapists um, who've kind of brought me back to life. Acupuncture was part of my process. Um, I think acupuncture is really great in regards to speeding your healing, but I truly, truly believe that our body is designed to heal. And I think I would wake up every day and I would say, Oh my God, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. I used to say that every day. And it was, it was like my mantra. And I would wake up in the morning and I would scan my body and I'd go, yep, yep, still in pain, I'm still in pain. I'd meet people, hi, how are you doing? Yep, yep, I'm in pain. Inside, it was what I was running on an everyday basis until I discovered that I needed to change my dialogue as well. And I'm very aware of what I say because we do create our lives, and um, which is what I believe. And I started to say, I'm holding the sensation of pain, but my body is remembering its alignment. And I think from that day, I gave my body permission to heal. And I've been on my process of healing and I'm kind of moving better than ever now. It's really, it's been quite an amazing time. And I think I've never really, I really have taken all of this for granted being a young person. I've just thrashed at it and thrown it there, left, right and center. and. Um, now I'm really conscious of what I ask it to do and, and I try and honour it and listen to it and serve it a lot better than I ever did. I think support to the rehabilitation process is incredibly important and I think there's not a lot of it, to be honest, and that makes me really sad. And I think I even stumbling upon the injuries that I had, I felt like there was nowhere for me to go to, to talk to anyone about it. Um, and every dancer goes through this because everyone talks about the dream, about being the dancer, and no one talks about kind of the end of your dance career. And, and it happens to everybody. Um, it's a career based on youth and we all age. So in that design, there should be a support system for people going through injuries. Or even if you're young and you're 23 and you've done something to your knee and you've got to have surgery and you've got to sit out, what happens is we, all of our self-worth and identity is attached to this thing called dancing. And most of us who have careers with it have started since we were three or four. And we've really found ourselves and our confidence via this, via movement and via being a dancer. And I think it's really, really important um, to have a, an amazingly healthy relationship with yourself to be a successful dancer and to be able to um, go through injury and be able to know how to support yourself and how to be patient and how to utilise your creativity. I think what I did was I, when I realised, I mean I'm crazy, I kind of pushed myself to work all the way through it because I could still choreograph, but I also had to do other things because I just, I, and I started talking and this is the point where I started lecturing and talking to everybody and I swear if I hadn't have been injured I wouldn't have stumbled upon that part of my career which is something that I absolutely love doing. I always say to students, um, okay you've got to take time out, you've got a bad knee, you won't be able to probably do the graduation at the end of this full-time course, maybe you, you'll get it better, maybe you'll do it again next year but in this time out don't just sit there and wait to heal and get frustrated and upset and emotional. Just channel your creativity into, a, into something else. Because I think when we're happy is when we're creative, being creative art, artists, being creative human beings. And so I say, find another free way in, find another way in. Is it writing? Is it drawing? Is it composing music? Is it editing? Is it, you know, is it something else? And usually when an injured person if I'm in contact with them and working with them and we have that discussion and they come back to me and they say, oh, you know what, I've actually, my knee's better now and I've worked out that I'm a really good editor and I've edited this short film and will you look at it? And so 
when you find another way to channel your energy, I think it ends up speeding up your healing process because your mind and your heart is in a better place um, than people who just sit there and get frustrated and frustrated and then try and push themselves too early to go back. And I know in a lot of musical theatre, there's pressure to be on stage, but I think if you've got a big injury, the worst thing you can do is come back too early and, and then go on and then make it worse and then be off for even longer. And I think even when we cast shows, we always talk about um, behaviour and reputation of everyone that we cast. And we all talk about how people may have handled injuries in the past. And it's something that is spoken about and considered in whether they're hireable again. And someone who addresses an injury straight off the bat, takes the time out, does the right physio and the right rehab and heals and comes back on altered duties and builds up to their full part, part of their role again. That's someone who you know is looking after themselves, you know is mentally healthy and is going to come back and give their best at their optimum best with their physicality. So it's interesting, sometimes that can make someone unemployable in how they handle it. But there isn't someone to go to and I wish there was. I. I will always send people to a psychologist. It's, you know, there's um, for people who do find it difficult and get that kind of support. But the best kind of support comes from yourself. <laughs> and I think you've got to be able to change your mental dialogue. You've got to be able to be aware of how you speak and what you say on a daily basis. And um, definitely for me, that was just, that was a really big one because all my self-worth and identity was attached to dancing. I'm supposed to be this dancing woman and who was I without it? You know what? I'm exactly the same. I'm me. So whether I dance or not, I'm, I'm still a magnificent human being. And that's what I think what we've got to connect to and I, why I think having a really great healthy relationship with yourself outside of dance or outside of your any kind of creativity is probably the most important thing and the thing that um, dancers need to work on um, as well. I didn't really get them until I was 45. I was pretty lucky, but I, my mindset was pretty positive. I've always been a glass half full girl. Um, what I would say to my younger self, and it's interesting because there's a friend of mine, a young girl in Melbourne who wrote a book about writing a letter to your teenage self. And she asked all different people from all different walks of life to write a letter to the young self. And she asked me to do one. She published it as it's a book that's been published. and. Uh, the biggest thing I got from trying as doing that as an exercise, which is quite a powerful thing to do, is that I just had I had such a low self-worth. And I think most young girls um, struggle with having a healthy self-worth and social media is fantastic for um, for inspiration and motivation and positivity. But when it becomes negative is when uh, you know a student, is disempowered themselves and isn't feeling great and they get on social media and they they look at things and they just they just enter into this sphere of comparison and I just believe that comparison is the thief of everyone's joy and that we're all unique and different and magnificent and I wish that I could go back to my younger self who was very frightened um, very shy uh, could hardly speak but when I danced, that was the thing, that was where my confidence was. I was like this beast when I danced and then you'd meet me and I could hardly talk to you. So I wish that I could tell her that she didn't have to be so frightened and that she was okay and that she was good at what she did. I think, you know, it's really old school training that maybe some of our teachers didn't tell us that we were any good, but I think I think for me that made me work even harder because I really, I wanted to be the best at what I did and, and I wanted my teacher to be proud of me and she she absolutely is. But um, I don't think she was a teacher and the teachers that I had, I had quite a few early up. They were, they were of that old school kind of teaching where it's kind of, you know, drill and, and yeah, there's not a lot of positive feedback. But you knew that they loved you, that you knew that they, were working really hard for you and, and you just wanted to please them. So yeah, I would say, young Kelly, be more confident. Be more confident at what you're doing. And 
And for people with injuries, young people, don't come back too early. Don't come back too early. Spend the time with yourself. It's really valuable, potent time to be with yourself when you've got to be still. And usually the universe has given you an injury because you've got to be still and you've got to figure out something for yourself. It's kind of a, a warning or a message for you to slow down and take heed and go in and, and ask yourself some questions that you might need to ask. Correct technique and placement in a dancer is everything in preventing injuries. It's everything. There's, you know, there's a lot of jazz dancers or hip-hop dancers who don't want to do ballet, and I tell them all to do ballet because it's such an incredible foundation and makes every genre of dancer a better dancer in the crossover. I think that I really didn't injure because I had such a strong ballet background. Um, I was in a ballet company from 12 to 17. Not many people would know this, and I was became the principal of that company. It was the Australian Youth Ballet Company, and I was in it from yeah 12 to 17, and so I I feel like I started working professionally with that company because we toured Australia, but we also toured to London and Scotland and overseas, and but that kind of discipline and that technique and that training I trained right through RAD Ballet. Uh, I think gave me a career where I didn't injure and I really honoured that technique and I worked really hard at um, having a great, a great facility that could um, really grasp all of, all of that kind of training and then I used it in my crossover. I used it when I was doing jazz, I used it when I was doing tap. I used the technique in the crossovers into my other styles and it, yeah, it gave me a very healthy facility. Also, I have to say my osteopath, Ross Partington, who's a magician, um, he said to me, Kelly, it'd be a really good idea if you went and trained at the gym, because if your musculoskeletal system is strong on top of your skeleton, you'll be likely to less injure. And I, I really have most of my career gone to the gym as well as danced. Um, you know, not big weights, small weights, high repetitions. And I've really um, honored that as well. So I think with the ballet discipline and the gym training and core training, and I think when I was young, that's something that we didn't really learn about. It's something that I've discovered later in life. The core training is something that I discovered later in my life because none of us knew about it until we were older. And it's been like a new generational thing where we, I think as dancers, we're also trained in the front of our body and not the back and um, Pilates and all of that training that gives you that 360 kind of brace in your core and and you know pelvic floor and all of those things it's wonderful to learn that kind of stuff and I've been working with um, another osteo called Petros um, Vornelis and he he has kind of really invested in, in my thinking and, and I'm teaching a lot of glute work especially in kind of jazz class because we're also turned on at the front and we're not turned on at the back. And most jazz dancers get a lot of back injuries because our glutes don't work. And we're really tight in our hip flexors because we spend our lives forward in a fondue, bent over, ready to hit the next step. And our glutes switch off and, and we get loaded with back problems. And I, I'm starting to do a lot of glute work in my classes and a lot of Pilates work in my classes because it's really important for young dancers to know and to um, and to utilize and, and yeah take on in their everyday practice building towards their career. It would be believe in your uniqueness. It blows my mind that everybody on the planet is completely different and the bravest thing you can do in life is be you. And I think if I could have known that when I was younger, I'm getting a grasp on it now. <laughs> and it's not, I have to practice it because it doesn't happen in my head every day, but we are unique and we are amazing and we're different and we can't follow our own artist's path by looking at someone else's lantern on their path. We have to hold our own lantern and walk with our light and our direction. And we are different. 
we can't compare ourselves to others. We can't compare ourselves to others' tempos and timings. Why have they got that show? I haven't got it. What am I doing? Like everyone has, has different tempos and timings and the artist's life is, is, is about walking your own path. And I think it's really interesting. You don't, you don't have to fit into what everyone else is doing. And with that, there's such liberty and freedom and um, explosive creativity when you think that way, because you don't have to fit in with everything else. And there's so much power in finding your uniqueness. I love telling the story, I told it yesterday at a class I was teaching, and it's about Bob Fosse. And you know, Bob Fosse wanted to be Fred Astaire when he was young, and he learnt and he danced like Fred Astaire and he, he kind of wanted to be Fred Astaire but he realised that he was naturally stoop-shouldered, knock-kneed, pigeon-toed, he had a skin condition on his hands, he wore gloves, he was balding at 23, he wore a hat. So everything that he would have considered was his weakness was actually his Bob Fosse style, it was his strength. And I challenge students and I say, if you could look at what your weaknesses were and identify what they were, could I challenge you to consider that they just might be what's amazing about you?